Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone, to the Community Voice. I'm Steve Grattick, your host. It's Monday morning, and uh, as usual, everything that happens on Monday morning is happening. <laughs> uh, we're very honored to have in studio Carroll County Chief Magistrate Judge Nathaniel Smith. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, okay. Last time you were on, which was about a year ago, I think I spent half the show on your intro, so I've cut it down. You ready? So originally from Decatur, uh, Nathaniel Judge Smith came to uh, West Georgia and got a degree in criminal justice in 1994 at University of West Georgia. Okay, his passion for pursuing justice was ignited and stimulated by the late Honorable Dewey Smith that led him to employment within the legal community and obtaining his Juris Doctorate at Oklahoma City University School of Law. After graduating from law school, Judge Smith returned home to Carrollton to establish his career, start a family, and continue his life of public service. When returning home from law school, he lived out of his automobile while studying for the bar exam, and after passing the bar exam, he enlisted in the U.S. Navy Reserves because he felt caused to serve the country. On assignments from the U.S. European Command Joint Analysis Center to Sub-Sahara Africa, with the Naval Criminal Investigative Service, Judge Smith has been awarded the Joint Achievement Medal, Expeditionary Service Medal, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, National Defense Service Medal, Navy Materials Service Medal, and other campaign ribbons. His legal experience extends over two decades, serving as an attorney in civil and criminal cases, served as guardian ad litem, serving the best interest of children, special assistant attorney, public defender, as well as juvenile court judge pro tem, and a municipal court judge, along with serving as a Coweta County juvenile prosecutor. On March 14th, just one year ago, almost, um, that's coming up. He was appointed to serve as the new chief magistrate judge for the Carroll County Magistrate Court by Chief Superior Court Judge John Simpson, a former state rep, and commissioned by Governor Brian Kemp. Upon being sworn in as judge, Smith committed, and we're going to talk about this, to expediting warrant procedures by forming a committee for the implementation of electronic warrants and immediately went to work to bring about needed efficiency to the court with improved judicial assignments, predictive calendaring and implementation of location tracking for pre-trial release of select defendants charged in criminal cases. He has served on the board of directors of Carrollton Main Street, Healing Carroll County Families, Community Action for Improvement, and advisor and board member to Carroll County Court Appointed Special Advocates, Costly. We'll talk about that also. And then finally, Judge Smith and his wife Shonda have three children, Malcolm, Nathaniel, and Joshua. He and his family attend Great Savior Baptist Church, where Judge Smith serves as pastor. Striving to keep his eye on the prize, he enjoys spending time with his family, helping others and nature. And one of his favorite scriptures is Philippians 4, 8. Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Well, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning, as, morning. As I said, I was going to say we're out of time. Thank you for coming in. You know, anyway. <laughs> Okay, well, good. Let's uh, let's jump right into it. Um, we uh, we kind of got like breaking news, quote unquote. We need a sounder, and I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll wrap on the on the table. Tell us about your recent work with electronic warrants and what that's uh, being accomplished in the magistrate court. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, e warrants. What that is uh, to to make it make more sense. You know, we we sign a just a number of warrants every morning i meet with law enforcement officers that come out to my office and uh we go through warrant procedures i swear them in about specific incidences and uh if there's probable cause i'll sign a warrant for the arrest of, a, of an individual uh same particular uh, uh situation with uh search warrants and uh, with the e-warrant system, one of the problems, uh, particularly with uh, search warrants, is that uh, we'll have a case where something is occurring on the north or south or somewhere out in the county, and an officer needs a search warrant. And what happens is that that officer uh, will leave that particular location, go to his office, type up a warrant, drive it to me. If he's in Temple, you're know, looking at about a 25-minute drive, uh, I review the warrant. If there are problems with the warrant, of course, I go, oh, we got problems here, 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 here. And, and then that officer drives back to Temple, makes corrections, and then drives back to see me again. 
and if the warrant meets you know the statutory requirements and uh, legal requirements in terms of probable cause I'll, I'll sign a, a search warrant we've lost in that time period uh, several man hours uh, we've lost uh, it, we had a case in particular where someone was held up in a house uh, uh, maybe about a month or two ago uh, where officers needed a, a warrant to go in and get the individual and uh, we're just we're, we're losing man hours we're losing time and then you get to a place like uh, somewhere like Whitesburg in the middle of the night I mean, they may only have one hour for sure on shift. If he's coming to see me at 2 a.m. Uh, for a search warrant or for an arrest warrant, uh, there's no one left there to take care of business, as they say. And uh, so we're, we're, we've sort of crippled them uh, by not having it. So uh, I assume the suspects and any evidence could be removed or, or manipulated during the time they're waiting for a search warrant. Absolutely, absolutely. So through the e-warrant system is that you do that electronically, uh, and it's even equipped more. It can be run out of an automobile. A number of officers have uh, laptops and other portable devices with them in their car, and they can simply open that up, type out their warrant, contact me via telephone or via email or text or what have you. So, Judge, I have a, I have a warrant in the system. Can you review it? You simply, the, the judge goes online, reviews that. Uh, there is a, a audio visual uh, recording of it. You load on the officer loads on, and you know, and you you basically re after reviewing, it, if it meets all the requirements of the law, you sign it electronically. Uh, it can be printed either to the police department uh, if they need a paper copy, or it can be printed at the sheriff's department, whatever location you deem uh, that you have access to. Uh, you give them a code, and that allows them to print it, and they can execute that warrant, saving numerous man hours uh, saving uh, our community in terms of safety because you can audit you, you you're right there you can get it done it, it would seem very logical i would i assume most counties are already doing this well a, a lot of the larger counties are doing it uh and we are uh, technically a larger county uh, in terms of the area immediately around us uh, coyote county has an e-warrant system douglas county has an e-warrant system Paulding County going over up to Cobb County, Fulton County, DeKalb County, of course, over into the metro area uh, are all on the same e-warrant system. Uh, the company that uh, all of those people use is uh, Palatine. There are some other uh, companies that do it, but up in this particular area, everyone uses uh, the Palatine e-warrant system. So is it fully in implemented now with the magistrate court? It is not. We have a, we're actually going before the board uh, this Thursday. Board of uh, Commissioners. Yes, regarding discussion about it and uh, see if we can get it approved. I've met with uh almost all of the local law enforcement agencies chiefs uh, we've done this sort of cooperative uh, sharing agreement uh, so that the municipalities can share in the cost of it and uh, everybody's excited about it and ready to get it done because again it's gonna it's gonna save us uh, a lot man hour wise for uh, officers uh, which of course we have mileage on automobiles timing and it's going to be a huge benefit uh, in terms of safety of the community for those uh, those cases where timing is really important a lot of uh, drug cases and uh, again cases where we really need to get a hold of somebody who's going to be who poses a significant threat to the community is there any objection or potential downside to doing this no okay <laughs> i just want to be clear on that so you should you expect a unanimous support from the commissioners i i, I do the only uh downside i could see to it is that i mean there's a learning curve of course sure. where, you know there's always this issue of that we have to learn something new uh but anytime you can learn something usually that's there's no downside to that you may uh something internally within yourself may not want to learn something new but and, and certainly make, a benefit it'll make you in the office just more efficient period absolutely you won't be you know okay well good Congratulations on that. We'll see what happens Thursday. Um, we're going to take a break. We're on Facebook Live. And, and for all of the, probably the bulk of us who don't understand or don't know what some of the duties are of Magistrate Court, we'll quickly review those when we get back. But first, these words. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org.
Oak Mountain Academy is an innovative school of academic excellence celebrating over 61 years. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to join us on the mountain to see our mission and vision in action. Academic excellence, a faith-based environment, and dynamic opportunities are just a few of the reasons our families choose Oak Mountain Academy. Academic scholarships and tuition assistance are available. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Good morning. Welcome back to the Community Voice. I'm Steve Braddock, your host. Delighted to have you with us. We have, uh, it's all been, been almost a year uh, that uh, Nathaniel Smith, uh, judge of the Carroll County Magistrate Court, was in the studio. He was uh, a year ago, about thereabouts, uh, he was appointed to this office. Now, for those of us who cannot, and I'm included, cannot keep everything straight between probate, magistrate, state, and superior courts, uh, <laughs> oh boy then let me kind of uh, just briefly and you can elaborate the magistrate court and this is from the uh, county website uh, jurisdiction includes arrests certain minor criminal offenses civil claims of 15,000 or less county ordinance violations deposit account fraud bad jets the depository dep no dispossessory writs Distress warrants, preliminary hearings, search warrants, summonses, and you may grant bail in cases where the setting of bail is not exclusively reserved, reserved to a judge or another court. No jury trials are held in magistrate court. Um, if they do request a jury trial, it can be removed to superior state court. That seems like an enormous number of topics. Am I right about that? It, it, it is a lot. It is a lot. So what, what, where do you spend most of your time? Well, uh, one of the things that I, I, I did when I came on what was doing what's called uh, direct and predictive calendaring, uh, there are four associate magistrate court judges. And uh, when I say predictive calendaring is that I, I do judge assignments now where we have one judge who does the civil calendar in terms of all the collection cases, all the garnishment cases, things like that. I have another judge uh, that does all the dispossessory hearings. Another judge, of course, uh, doing the great majority of the criminal cases. Uh, we try to split up first appearance hearings. I, I'm not sure if you're aware it or not, but uh, Judge Camp, uh, Judge Jim Camp was uh, w one of our judges, and he passed away. It's been about right. two weeks now. Right. Uh, but Jim it was sort of our, he, he floated. I mean, he would do the last dispossessory calendar for the month, uh, and he would also do a number of the first appearance hearings. Uh, but we we've, we've been a, a little bit of a, as a, at a loss without him emotionally uh, as well as just caseload wise. Um, but we're 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 we're, we're getting through it. Uh, every morning I meet with officers and go over warrants. And uh, Edith, one of our clerks, brings me in all the uh, collection and default cases, abandoned automobiles, abandoned mobile homes, things like that. And I review all those cases, uh, which gives me quite a full day. Uh, the other judges, of course, again, I was saying before, predictive calendaring, Judge Brewer was doing our civil calendar on Mondays uh, because of conflicts and things like that. And now he's doing our, our, pre, our prelim hearings uh, every other Friday, basically. And uh, but again, predictive calendaring has worked out well because it gives uh, it reduces what I call judge shopping. I'm not sure if people in the community are familiar with that. But if you've been involved in litigation, people often want to know. Uh, they they want to say, well, this judge is more likely to do this, or this judge is more likely to do that. And I will tell you, as a lawyer myself, I always wanted to be able to say to my client, well, I'm familiar with this judge, and this is what they do uh, customarily, and this is what I, I, I think this case may pan out based on this judge. And to sort of give some predictability on that, I started doing judge assignments where I'd say, okay, this judge is going to hear this these types of cases. So the community will, will know and be able to have some sort of predictability if they've been in court a lot that this judge is more likely to do this. Uh, we have a mediation department. Uh, Miss Miss Knott does that, Brenda Knott, and uh, there that 
lends itself a lot of times to people being able to resolve their own cases because they can say, well, this judge usually does this. So we can go to mediation, maybe come to some sort of agreement uh, because based on past experience with this judge, this is what they're going to do. Isn't that a volunteer group mediators or used to be or? Some of them are volunteer are volunteers, and some of them uh, do get paid. Uh, the person that we use a lot is a gentleman named Bruce Lyon. He is there. Uh, Dr. Bruce Lyon. Yes. Wow. Phenomenal guy. Sure. Does a really good job. Uh, but he's there on our civil calendars and our dispo days, and uh, again does a, does a great job. Yeah. Uh, for a time, I think he was president of UWG. Uh, yes. Yes. Interim. Maybe. He was the uh, he was there uh, as the interim president for a while when yeah. I was there back in I want to say ninety two or ninety three he was there as the uh, interim president after uh, the passing of uh, Doctor um, was it Townsend Yes Yes Okay um, I'll Take a minute because I think mediation is important Mediation alleviates I would assume some of the burden for the court Correct It does. It, how so people should really when they get in these situations um, instead of a full-blown trial they really be ought to be open-minded to mediation yes more than uh, more than half of the cases that we we have come through are mediated uh, and when I say media I mean successfully mediated and um, it, it helps out the court a lot uh, sometimes we'll go through a calendar and people will agree at the last sort of minute to to mediate cases and again a lot of those resolve and sometimes by doing a mediation you may get a remedy that you may not get otherwise uh, especially when it comes to uh, uh, dispossessory cases because the landlord may have a good relationship with the tenant and say you know what you've been a great tenant you know, I, I understand you don't have the money, but I'll let you stay there mm -hmm. for X, uh, you know, a, a longer period of time than the judge might might not give you otherwise. And sometimes they work out things in terms of deposits and things like that. So it's it's a very it's it's a great process. Now, this next question, I want you to I want you to just be completely honest. OK, now I'm assuming <laughs> always, for, always. completely. Uh, yeah, I'm exactly. Struggling. Always. I'm assuming you see people at their very best and you see them at their very worst, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so kind of reflect on that for a minute. I mean, it, you see people that step up when they've got a hard challenge and you got people who just, you know, want to throw a chair through the window. Uh, yes, indeed, especially at, uh, at first appearance. Uh, I'm a big I'm big about justice, and sometimes mm -hmm. justice just simply, uh, you know, being heard. And uh, some people have, you know, given me grief about it. And so why you let that guy go on and on and on? It's like, well, he he he'll feel better after he just gets it off his chest, you know. Sure. And, and it doesn't hurt me any to just let him talk about it. And sometimes, you know, it helps law enforcement because some people will they'll be at their first appearance and they'll say, I did it. I didn't mean to do it, but I did it. I <laughs> I, I pushed her down the stairs, you know, and it's like. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't really help your case at all. Yeah, but it's uh, it means something to me because here's here's sometimes here's a person who's completely remorseful, and sometimes it's a person who's like I'm just a mean snake, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, so you you learn a lot from the experience, uh, but sometimes you sometimes you have someone who has they they are in front of you and they appear to have a good demeanor, but due to their record and their circumstances and situations it's like. Uh, I'm hearing you, but I, I just can't give you a bond. Uh, I've looked at your record. I've considered your charges. And then you see it, you know, this sort of explosive sort of personality. You know, yeah, y'all yeah, are just playing games yeah. and you not being fair. And <clears throat> yeah. Um, it, over the years, is it getting better? Or is it getting worse? Uh, That's a good question. The 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 case there the, the, there's a lot of cases. Another way of uh, saying it is the culture getting better, and, or is the West Georgia culture getting better, or getting worse? Statistically, crime is is not high in terms of the numbers. The type of offenses sometimes are really bad, yeah. uh, which is which is scary. I mean, we had a shooting up in Temple, uh, maybe about a month ago, that was horrific. Uh, at the beginning of the year, we had uh, quite a few child molestation cases that made my stomach turn. Right. Uh, so in, in that sense, I mean, we, we've got some really bad 
cases out there, uh, but it's not as many. Mm-hmm. Um, so in, in that sense, crime is low. But again, the type of, you know, we, we all deserving or not deserving. Everyone wants to live in a community where they feel safe in their home, feel safe in their community. And, and we should and we should have that. And it sort of goes back to the e-warrant thing. We need to provide law enforcement all, with all the tools that we can provi- possibly provide them within the limits of the law that's going to help them. Uh, help provide us uh, a feeling of comfort and safety in our homes, uh, safety in our community, and uh, we just, we just, we need to go after it, and not limit them. Uh, when I was, uh, you mentioned my my background. When I was in the military, I mean, I worked with the DEA and Naval Criminal Investigative and Ser- Service and uh, AFOSI, and just you know doing interdiction work, doing some of the piracy stuff that was occurring in Africa. And uh, we, we, we need those tools. Uh, people who violate the law, they can just do whatever they want. I mean, they don't really have a, there's no rule book for them per se. No one's going to say, oh, you can't do this or you can't do that. We can say it, but they're going to do it anyway. And uh, so we, when we start tying our law enforcement hands to some degree regarding things that are easy and simple, like electronic warrants, then mm-hmm. what, what, what are we doing? You know, mm-hmm. what are we doing? Um, so again, we need we need to do all we can to sort of help those people that are out there to help us. It's the public's attitude. I know in the last couple of years, where we, it's been difficult to recruit law enforcement officers. How's the current public attitude toward um, law enforcement? I, I am not sure, but there are things um, that when you're in the community that people aren't aware of, and you're happy and life is great. But I will tell you, as a magistrate court judge. Uh, I've come to know information, I guess, also just like with the military, you come to know information. And by having that information, it gives you a little bit of anxiety. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I, one of the things that I that concerns me, not as a judge, but as a person who lives in Carroll County, is the shortage of law enforcement mm-hmm. officers. We need more law enforcement officers. Uh, the, the sheriff's department, uh, they, they operate in these zones and there are only so many officers per zone. So if you live out, you know, somewhere out in the county, um, uh, in, in Bowden, in that area, if you're out in the county in that area, you may have one deputy or two deputies zone for that area, but the city of Bowden will help those officers. And they, right. you know, the city of Bowden has, you know, uh, maybe four or five officers, but then if you get to out like to Whitesburg or Mount Zion, they've only got a couple of officers in terms of the city. So if something really horrific happens, there's not enough support. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. you get a home invasion or something like that. That's uh, and, and, and as a as a as a citizen, I mean, that that's scary for me. I mean, I don't live in that community, but I live in the community that is Carroll County. Uh, and I. I, I I'm concerned for my neighbor. Ed. You know, I, I would put it that I'm concerned for my neighbor. And I want them uh, to be safe in their homes. Do do in your work and in the magistrate court, the you know the headlines these days are being dominated by the border crisis and the uh, uh, illegal migrants coming in, et cetera, et cetera. Have you had any observation or encounters with any of that issue? Uh, we we have had some cases. Um, I had one case in particular that bothered me. It was a gentleman out of, I want to say Oklahoma or Kansas. Uh, it was a marijuana trafficking case. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was concerned. I was like, if this guy gets out, we're never, we're never going to see him again. Uh, and, and I, and, and some people say, Oh, it's a nonviolent offense, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but you're, when there's drugs involved, there's usually violence involved because people want to, take the money or take the drugs. Uh, we had a, there was a shootout over near the college right. over a marijuana case right. uh, where several, you know, a number of shots were fired. There was a, a shootout in an apartment complex and a robbery again because of marijuana. Uh, so it's the, it's the, the culture that tags along with the crime. Uh, and, and that's concerning, but all those things that occur in other States in terms of trafficking drugs, that comes through here, uh, it, it, it's concerning, uh, and a lot of a lot of time uh, I'll see some of those cases, and the person will say, I, "I don't, I don't speak any English." It's like, and then things get to going on. It's like, 
Well, you speak perfectly good English. What happened? You know, when, when this started going on, when you first started, you said you didn't speak any English. But now all of a sudden you're having a full-blown conversation with me. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it's an interesting ordeal, but it, it can be quite frustrating at times. Our guest this morning is Carroll County Chief Judge Nathaniel Smith. Uh, we've only got to have a few minutes left, but first we've got to take our second break, and we'll be back with more after this. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. The AP Scholar Journey at Oak Mountain Academy is designed to provide students with a clearly defined advanced placement curriculum track to earn a series of distinctions upon graduation. This journey enables academically prepared students to pursue college-level studies throughout 17 AP courses in five subject categories while enrolled at OMA. I'm Patrick Uran, Head of School, inviting you to journey with us on the mountain. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Good morning. Welcome back to the Community Voice. I've been very pleased to have in studio Kara County Chief Magistrate Judge Nathaniel Smith, which has kind of got me awake on a Monday morning where everything is helter-skelter, as they say. <laughs> now, you were appointed, and so now this is your first election, I think, May 21st. Yes, yes. Uh, on your website, you've got tons of endorsements already. Uh, a lot of them of attorneys. Uh, we got several attorneys, Cynthia Daly, Harry Daniels, uh, Robert Duffy, Desiree Duke, Michael Flynn, Brian H Howard, uh, attorneys uh, Perry and Pilgrim, Swindle, Ann Mitchell, and Matt Lane, who's just moved to a new building. Um, then you've got Commissioner Montrell McClendon. You've got several business owners. Uh, so you've got a, and you even got a former state senator Wayne Garner, um, Steve Adams, business owner, et cetera, et cetera, a whole bunch. So, um, so this is your, really your first election. So, um, tell, so you knock on somebody's door. You got sixty seconds. Now, most of the times you'll go in, you'll talk to them however long they want to hear. <laughs> But, you know, they got dinners cooking, so you only got 60 seconds. What, what do you tell these fine folk uh, why they should vote for uh, Chief Magistrate Judge Nathaniel Smith? Wow, what, what a question. Well, I will tell you, I have done some door-to-door, -door, and uh, I'm your neighbor. You know, I knock on a door, and people, you know, meet me, and I simply tell them, hey, I'm your local Chief Magistrate Court Judge. Uh, I'm up for election here coming in, in May. I like your support. I like your vote. And I'm your neighbor, and I just want to be here, neighbors, helping neighbors. Well, I want to give justice to everybody, no matter your age, uh, no matter what you have going on, if you have a disability or if you have a special needs uh, situation, or you have a, a dog or uh, no matter what the situation may be, sometimes uh, people get caught up and we've got the person who's the captain of the debate team and a person with an anxiety uh, speech impediment. They go to court. Who should win? It should have nothing to do with their faculties. It should have to do with the facts of the case and the law, and that's what I do. I just want to be fair to everybody and provide justice to everybody. And your website real quick? It is www.judgenathanglesmith.com. Thank you to Carroll County Chief Magistrate Judge Nathaniel Smith. Thank you for listening. Thank you to our sponsors. Go out and make it a great day. You're in tune to WLBB Carrollton. <laughs> 